Now let's go to uh, this journal. It's from uh, an anthropological uh, science uh, magazine journal. This came out in 1939. Volume 38 actually spoke of the same thing. It was like uh, the beginning of the talk and, and the next month for volume 39, they continue to talk about it. So it says here, let's see if I can zoom into it. So again, it's man, a monthly record of anthropological science published under the direction of the Royal Anthropological Institute of Great Britain and Ireland. It says here, Negro skeletal remains from Indian sites in the West Indies. It says the recent paper in this journal by Buxton, Trevor and Julian, they're talking about the previous article I mentioned, right? Volume uh, 47, 1938, implies that an under undeformed Negroid physical type inhabited the Virgin Islands in pre-Columbian times. Not only is this implication contrary to previously accepted findings for the Antillean area, as will be shown later, but it also fails to give adequate consideration to the possibility of these skeletal remains representing intrusive Negro burials. The mere presence of skeletons in a sand or shell mount of Indian origin, like in careful stratigraphic records, is not certain evidence of primary association with the accompanying artifacts. Moreover, I venture to say that few physical anthropologists familiar with American Indian skulls would mistake for Indians those illustrated by Buxton, Trevor, and Julian. Indeed, most physical anthropologists would probably be less conservative and say Negro instead of Negroid. All right, so 100%. Negro. He wouldn't even say it's Negro-ish, right? Or Negroid. It's a Negro or copper-colored person, right? In support of the opinion that these authors are describing Negroes, uh, one, I wish to present a similar case from Barbados, British West, West Indies. From correspondence with Mr. E. M. Shillstone of Bridgetown, Barbados, it appears that in August 1933, he commenced to excavate a sandy ridge about 50 yards from high water mark on the shore of Chancery Lane, on the southern coast of the island, the ridge proved to be a kitchen midden containing many objects of Arawak workmanship. Among other things encountered in the site was a skeleton, lying on, on its left side at about 20 inches under the surface. Mr. Shilston believed this skeleton to be that of an Arawak Indian and in 1937 presented it as such to the U.S. National Museum. Upon reconstruction of the skull from the many fragments in which it was received in Washington, I felt justified in calling it a Negro for reasons that will appear from the following description. Two views of the Barbados skulls are shown in Play D 1 and 2. Comparison with the two skulls shown in the paper by Bukeson, Trevor, and Julian indicates that the individual and sex differences are no more than would be expected of the range of variation in a single race. 
Certainly, however, such negroid features as all the older prognathism, broad nose, and low orbits are more pronounced in the case of the Virgin Island skulls. So as you can see, uh, you know, there's information here correlating more findings of skulls. So it's not just in one location, right? So we, so far we get a couple of different sources, right? In the same article, just a little bit ahead in the next page, it says, without going into further details in connection with physical type, I will call attention to one thing that clearly proves the Barbados specimen to be Negro. The photograph of the normal frontalis shows the upper median inc incisors to be artificially pointed. We have here a well-known type of West African dental mutilation. So this is actually from the first article uh, in the volume, the volume number 38 before the uh, one we just read. When they were just learning that this was actually starting to look like Negroid, they're saying. <laughs> so right here, they're still arguing. Okay, let me just show you. It says, Professor Hatt over the face seemed to argue against the likelihood of secondary internment after the introduction of Negro slaves in the 17th century. While admitting that the conditions of their final recovery were far from ideal, we are inclined provisionally to accept a pre-Columbian date for the remains as a whole. They're saying that these bones are pre-Columbian, before Columbus, so it's not introduced and it wasn't a mixture of African slaves. Now, uh, let's read on. So it's interesting. It says, it is perhaps not without significance that Sir William Flower, 1895, commented on the Negroid characteristics of two out of a number of Jamaican crania of undoubted Indian origin examined by him. This series was subsequently measured by Dr. Haddon, who mentions the occurrence of considerable variation in the values of the nasal indices in his note on the craniology of the aborigines of Jamaica. During 1897, additional human material from the Virgin Islands may elucidate the problem arising from the present discussion. So it's becoming a problem to them because they're finding all these Negroid uh, skeletons, right? Pre-Columbian all over the, the places, right? So um, that book from Jamaica or that reference, you can find it uh, here if you see it. It says Durden J.E. 1897, Aboriginal Indian Remains in Jamaica. And Flower Sir William 1895, on the recent discovered remains of the Aboriginal inhabitants of Jamaica. I did find the books, but as little brief parts and they're blocked. You have to be a member of a, like a university or something and put in your password. So I wasn't able to get the exact, but if you guys have access to it, there it goes. All right, just do the research, it's there. 